Our top focus at this hour, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken has now reached Berlin. He will be holding high-level talks with European allies. After wrapping up these meetings in Berlin, Blinken will then head to Geneva, where he will meet the Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov. The final meeting will be held on Friday. Blinken also announced that he would not present a formal response to Russian proposals on the Ukraine crisis. He says that the two sides needed to explore common ground Blinken has reiterated that some Russian ideas were clearly absolutely non-starters, such as barring Ukraine from joining NATO. He has also promised relentless diplomatic efforts to prevent any renewed aggression. We will continue our relentless diplomatic efforts to prevent renewed aggression and to promote dialogue and peace. At the same time, we continue to bolster Ukraine's ability to defend itself and make clear the costs that the United States and Europe will impose on Moscow if it rejects the diplomatic path that we've laid out uh, and uh, proceeds with an unwarranted, unprovoked, unacceptable invasion or destabilization of Ukraine. U.S. President Joe Biden has predicted that Russia would make a move on Ukraine. However, Biden said that Putin may not want a full-blown war. The U.S. President further warned that Russia would pay dearly in case of a full-scale invasion Biden also suggested that there would be a lower cost for a minor incursion. I think what you're going to see is that Russia will be held accountable if it invades. And it depends on what it does. It's one thing if it's a minor incursion and then we end up having a fight about what to do and not do, etc. But if they actually do what they're capable of doing with the force of mass on the border, it is going to be a disaster for Russia if they further invade Ukraine, and that our allies and partners are ready to impose severe cost and significant harm on Russia and the Russian economy. Biden's latest comments lead to confusion and uncertainty about how exactly the West could respond if Putin orders an invasion on Ukraine. Biden highlighted that a third summit with Putin is still possible. The two leaders met twice in 2021. Biden and his team have now prepared a broad set of sanctions and other economic penalties to impose on Russia in case of an invasion. Satellite imagery by Maxar Technologies showed Russian forces deployed in four locations in Western Russia. Now this region is very close to the border with Ukraine. Russian Army pilots flew new KA-52 Alligator combat helicopters for the first time at an Air Force base in the southern Rostov region near the Ukrainian border. The new helicopters are a modernized version of an older type. Now, according to the Russian Ministry of Defense, the improved battle assault systems allow the helicopters to engage in combat at any time of day and in any weather condition. Tens of thousands of Russian troops are positioned on the Ukrainian border. Tensions between Moscow and the West have reached a post-Cold War high. Moscow insists that it has no plans to invade Ukraine, but demanding wide-ranging security guarantees as of now. The U.S. Deputy Secretary of State Wendy Sherman spoke with the Indian Foreign Secretary Harsh Shringla over a number of border and regional issues, and the U.S. says that it has briefed India on Russian military buildup at Ukraine's border. During these talks, both sides discussed a wide range of issues. This includes the Indo-Pacific, situation in the Gulf, the UNSC cooperation, as well as the pandemic. Meanwhile, the Russian Deputy Foreign Minister Sergei Rybkov had a meeting with the Indian envoy to Russia, Pavan Kapoor, on Monday. The two sides exchanged views and assessment about events in Geneva, Brussels and Vienna. For India, both the United States and Russia are close partners. Our correspondent Trent Murray is now joining us live from Berlin for more details about this standoff. Trent, welcome to Beyond World is One. Now the world is watching the simmering tensions between Russia and the West over Russia's aggression towards Ukraine. So what can we expect from the meeting between the U.S. Secretary of State Blinken as well as Russian Foreign Minister Lavrov? What in particular will be the tone and tenor of this meeting? 
Well, I think uh, as part of this whistle-stop uh, whirlwind tour of Europe by Secretary of State Anthony Blinken, there's a couple of real motives here. And, and the first really is to send a strong message to the Kremlin uh, that the US is united with European allies in trying to push back against Russian aggression in the region. I mean, the latest intelligence suggests that up to 120,000 uh, troops are now positioned on the Ukrainian border, also battalions that include tanks and heavy artillery. So so there really is a ratcheting up now of tensions on both sides. Also, what you're seeing from the NATO side is a continual delivery of weapon systems to the Ukrainians. I mean, London has been sending uh, anti-tank missiles via the RAF in recent days. And also overnight, the US gave the Baltic states, Estonia, Lithuania and Latvia, uh, the, the green light to right. essentially also export US-made weapons from those countries to Ukraine. So there is ongoing tension. And, and I think that really the, the, the focus now of Secretary Blinken is to not just get European unity, but to also try and just essentially get Russia to take a step back here uh, to try and ease some of these tensions. That's what he'll be trying to do when he meets with Lavrov in Geneva. Right. Now, Trent, yesterday we heard uh, at a press conference in Kiev, Blinken reaffirmed the U.S. strong support for Ukraine amid the standoff with Russia. While Russia says it has no plans to invade Ukraine, the West fears otherwise. So how will all this unfold in the coming days? Yeah, well, I, I think uh, one of the really good ways to explain this is, is a statement that was made by the German foreign minister in, uh, in recent days. When she was visiting Moscow, she, she told Sergei Lavrov that, look, you're saying that you don't have plans to invade Ukraine, and yet you've got tens of thousands of troops on their border. It's very hard not to interpret that as a threat, both from the Ukrainian and European perspective. And uh, th I mean, that is the point that many European diplomats are trying to make, that on one side, you've got the Kremlin saying it doesn't have any plans to make this decision and yet you've got really satellite imagery and intelligence suggesting that the numbers there are just unprecedented. So I suppose it's really against that backdrop that US uh, President Joe Biden made that pretty startling admission right. overnight that he thinks President Putin will indeed make the decision to move in. I mean that was just an extraordinary uh, statement by the White House and I think it's really concentrated minds here now in Europe uh, that this is now a very real possibility that we could see an armed conflict in Ukraine. Trent Murray, thank you so much for all those insights and thanks for joining us on the story from Berlin. Beyond World is One is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news updates on the move.